This Echeveria is a gorgeous Agavoids cultivar. It's called Benemusume, which means Crimson Girl or Red Girl in Japanese. If I have the translation wrong, please do correct me in the comments below. I wasn't able to find much information on its origin and whether it's a spontaneous Agavoids mutation or a hybrid that came to existence by crossing two different Agavoids Echeveria. Either way, Beni Musume is a fantastic plant that's easy to grow, propagate and also looks really lovely. If you're a beginner or collect Agavoids Echeveria, this cultivar will not disappoint. The size can range from about 15 to 18 cm in diameter based on the growing environment. It has a clumping habit and when the offsets are kept intact, it will keep spreading as long as there's enough space and nutrients. Mature clumps can measure over 30 cm or 12 inches. Height-wise, Beni Musume grows on a short stem to about 15 cm or 6 inches. The leaves are on the thinner side and can grow long with a pointy tip. Just like with other agavoids, they are glossy and almost look like they've been waxed. This is why agavoids cultivars are also referred to as molded wax agave. Beni Musume has a very bold stress color. The tips and most of the outer leaf can turn dark or blood red. The best colors usually come through during the cooler months and when the plant is stressed. During the growing season and when the weather is warm, the color will likely be green with a faint red here and there. This succulent is a sun lover and will grow best in a bright sunny spot outdoors. It can tolerate outdoor shade and filtered light but is likely to not get colorful. It can grow leggy and stretched too. Fungal diseases are also more likely to attack when succulents are grown in shaded and humid spots. Unfortunately, Beni Musume is not suitable to be grown in those long term and will likely eventually die unless you have plant growing lights, a sunroom or a huge sunny window. It should however tolerate overwintering and short stays indoors as long as it's kept in a super bright spot. It will grow well in pots as well as frost free gardens. If grown in pots, repotting every year or so will ensure lots of offsets and a healthy plant. This succulent may struggle a bit when root bound for too long and can start losing leaves as a result. The offsets may also not grow and will stay small as it won't have enough root space and energy to grow. If you only get light frosts and no snow during winter, you can grow Beni Musume in the garden. To help it establish and grow better, mix any type of potting mix in with the garden soil. Most Echeveria roots are quite thin and may find it difficult to break through hard garden soil. By cultivating and mixing in a bit of potting mix, you'll add nutrients and improve the soil structure. When planting in the garden, it's best to choose a slope, raised beds or a spot where water doesn't pool after the rain. In pots, the absolute best potting medium is succulent potting mix. It will have the right pH and nutrients tailored to succulent plants. As mentioned earlier, when planting in the garden, make sure to cultivate the soil. Beni Musume is pretty tolerant of overwatering and can stay outdoors even when it's raining quite heavily. In my experience, Beni Musume can struggle with a mildew if it's been exceptionally wet and humid. It can also develop edema, but for this to happen, it would need to rain non-stop for a couple of weeks. As long as Beni Musume is planted in succulent potting mix, the pot has holes and it's exposed to plenty of good sun, it should be fine. In my nursery, all Beni Musume live permanently outdoors. If you're growing this plant in a greenhouse or undercover, water well once the potting mix dries up completely from previous watering. In summer, this could mean watering a few times per week and almost not at all during the colder months. It will deal with drought as well and can last for months without any water whatsoever. It can lose quite a few leaves if kept too dry for too long though. Temperature wise, Beni Musume will tolerate heat well over 40 degrees Celsius or 104 Fahrenheit though it should be moved out of the sun once it gets this hot. If exposed to direct sun during extreme heat waves, the leaves can suffer sunburn and the plant could die, especially when planted in dark colored pots. 
Agavoids hybrids can be a bit frost tolerant but are not likely to survive when frost settles for too long or when it snows. Frost cloth can be used to protect your succulents from the occasional frost but if your climate gets snow I'd advise to bring this plant indoors for the duration. This plant can be propagated from seed, leaf and cuttings of offsets. In my opinion the seed is not worth trying as it's a super long process and it can be hard to find a reliable seed seller. For fast results propagating cuttings of offsets is the best method. Wait until there's a bit of a stalk and cut with clean scissors. The cuttings should then be left to dry in a shady dry spot for a minimum of 24 hours. They can then be planted into pots filled with succulent potting mix and transplanted into the garden or a bigger pot once enough roots develop. First roots should start growing in 2 to 4 weeks and the plant will be ready to transplant in approximately 2 to 3 months. If you want loads of plants, leaf propagation is the way to go. Beni Musume propagates from leaf well, however, as with most agavoids, they may prove difficult to remove without breaking. I usually let Agavoids echeveria dry out until a bit wrinkly before removing leaves. I leave the leaves in a tray in a bright but shaded greenhouse and wait for leaf babies to emerge. I then plant them in trays or pots filled with succulent potting mix and wait a few months until the roots have grown well into the pot. In my experience, propagating is best done in spring. Summer is usually also good but do be careful to protect your cuttings and leaves from strong sun as they can burn easily. In climates where autumn and winter are mild, you can also propagate cuttings at the beginning of autumn. Personally, I stop propagating leaves by early to midsummer so the plant has a chance to develop before winter. Bad news I'm afraid, Beni Musume is well liked by most succulent pests and you'll need to keep an eye out for them. Aphids usually start flocking in when blooms appear. They can then spread to the rosettes below too. Both foliar and root feeding mealybugs can attack. Watch out for those cottony sacs. Root mealybugs are more likely to be found on root bound plants. This is why checking on the health of the roots can be important. Bigger pests such as snails, slugs, caterpillars and grasshoppers can pose a threat too. If larger chunks go missing, one of them is likely to be the culprit. Beni Musume sends out gorgeous flowers high above the foliage. They create an arch of about 15 individual flowers. The color is red, orange and yellow. These magnificent blooms can be used as cut flowers too. If you're worried about aphids, cutting the inflorescence may be the best way to go as it is less likely Beni Musume gets attacked. Here in Australia, Beni Musume flowers at the end of winter and throughout early spring, but this can be different in other parts of the world. All Echeveria are said to be non-toxic to dogs, cats, other pets, livestock and humans. Having said that, I would not advise making a Beni Musume leaf salad just in case. And that is all for today. I hope this video was useful and if you have anything to add or would like to ask a question, you can do so in the comments below. To learn more about succulents, hit that subscribe button or go to succulentgrowingtips.com. Thank you so very much for watching.